Hi, and welcome to the third grade curriculum preview. This is going to be for the fourth six weeks, and we're going to go through our side presentation with just a couple of notes. Um, you're obviously listening to the voiceover um, version. If you would rather um, just look through the slides and then read the notes at the bottom of the screen, that is fine. Just um, go ahead and stop the video and then head on back to the s'more. Um, you're welcome to use whichever version works best for you. Okay, um, I'd like to start off by just reminding you of the importance of using the overview um, for the unit. Um, those are going to be located in Canvas, and they are essential for saving you time, um, understanding what is available for you to teach the very best unit that you can for science this six weeks. Um, and if you are a little unclear on how to navigate to that page in Canvas, you might want to pause um, the video and then just take a look at the instructions on, on the screen. Um, I want to make sure that you're able to access that. Um, you're going to be able to get to the pacing guide and the clarifiers from the unit overview too. So it's really the key um, portal for you to get all the information that you need for this unit. Okay, I'd like to start off just by looking at the calendar for the district for um, this upcoming um, six weeks. Um, it starts on January um, 16th and then it ends on February 23rd. We do have two student holidays in there and then just a heads up, the Science CBA is scheduled to be at the end of February, um, the week after the six weeks. Um, the pacing guide um, can be found at the top of the unit overview. So once you get to the unit overview, um, you can just click on this hyperlink that I have um, highlighted here, and then um, you will get to the pacing guide. So we're going to take a look at the pacing guide for this particular six weeks. You can see it's divided up into uh, three mini sections. Um, there are two uh, mini units that are about 10 class periods, and then the last one is about seven class periods. Um, here we have our content standards listed, and then these are all the partnered process skills. And most of the time, the process skills are really embedded in any of the AIMS and STEM scopes lessons, but I like for you to see what those process skills are, um, specifically when we look at tools that you're um, using with your students. Okay, so let's take a look at the pacing guide in a little bit different manner with some more detail. Um, this is the same three sections that we just looked at. We have four content standards overall, and I've chunked them into three different mini units. So let's take a look at the weather um, mini unit that we have here. Um, so we've got 10 classes that are um, devoted for this, and that might seem a lot, but when we look at the content piece for the standard as well as the process skills, I think you'll see you're going to need that time. So the first thing I want to just point out is that students are to be observing the weather. So that means if it's um, a day that they can go out and actually record the weather, they should be doing that. Um, you can also access weather information online, but you'll see in just a moment, you're going to be comparing different locations um, for the weather that's happening on the same day. Um, at the same time. So it makes sense to perhaps record the weather location right there on your campus and then find a different location um, either in the state or maybe even around the country to do the comparison. The other verb that we have here is measure. So they're going to need to be using tools to get that weather information and then they're going to need to record it and then compare it. So all of those different verbs need to be done um, by students. And then when we're comparing, we're talking about day to day, same time, but different locations. So again, we need to be looking at two different locations or more um, on the same day at the same time, if um, you can find that information um, and then comparing that. Uh, the next mini unit um, is 10 classes where we talk about the sun and the sun, earth, and moon. So those are two content standards that go nicely together. Um, this is the first time your students will be looking specifically at characteristics of the sun. Um, and so the standard says describe and illustrate the sun, um, that it's a star that is composed of gases, and it provides light and heat energy for the water cycle. Be sure that you keep this piece, the water cycle, in with this standard because that really is um, going to set the stage for when students um, move into the water cycle focus for fourth and fifth grade. They're going to really be looking at that interaction between the sun and the ocean and the sun, how it drives the water cycle. Um, 
the second part of this 10 day mini unit is constructing models showing the sun, earth, and moon. And so um, taking the sun, earth, and moon and then creating different models of that on paper, 3D, um, it needs to include orbits and it also needs to include the positions of those three. And if 10 days seems like a large time, you could definitely break this up into two five-day mini units if you wanted to do that. But with the content piece in here being so closely related, I had just put those together as a 10-day mini unit. But you can you can um, edit that as, as you would like. We end up the unit four um, pacing guide with seven classes and talking about planets in the solar system. And... Um, this is a supporting standard um, for the fifth grade star. This is the first time students have talked about the planets in the solar system, and they don't have it again until they just review it for fifth grade. So it's important for us to spend some time. Um, I've seen lots of different variations of this particular standard, so I'm going to talk a little bit about actually what the standard says and hopefully help you um, guide into hitting what we really need to for this particular standard. Um, the summary of this standard is here. It's identify the planets and their position in relation to the sun. So I've seen lots of research topics and research projects being done about the different planets, which is a great integration if that's something that helps you with writing or your reading standards. Um, but when we look at the actual standard for science, it's really focused on identifying the planets and in their position in relation to the sun. So let's take a look at what that means a little bit. Um, here's a vertical view, which I think is helpful to clarify what we where students have been with a particular standard and where they're going. So um, you can pause this and just kind of look vertically across, but let me kind of frame this for you. Um, this row shows the vertical alignment for weather. So you can see what your students did last year, what they're doing this year that's different, and what they're going to do in the next two years. And the same thing here with the water cycle. And you might think, hmm, I thought 3.8b um, was always about the sun. Well, it is, but when you look at the last part of that, it's really its relationship to the water cycle. So you can pause and take a look at that alignment um, as well. And then when we look at um, looking at the sun, earth, and moon, and then the planets, I put these two together um, because this one is more about the water cycle. But when you look at the relationship of those um, objects in the sky and the solar system, really they've only looked at changes in the sky generally um, in second grade and years previous. Um, so this is the first time that they've really started to create models and look at that um, kind of that space theme. Um, there's no touching on this again in fourth grade, so the next time that they will talk about these concepts is here in fifth grade, where they uh, specifically um, compare and contrast the sun, earth, and moon, and then in the sixth grade, this is what comes up. So you can see that this is a really important um, piece for your students because they've never had it before, and they won't really have much more of it um, until... Um, they get maybe into the upper grades. So what I've done here is I've just um, kind of created a um, summary of how I think that this really can impact your planning and your instruction. So again, you're welcome to pause this and kind of read through that um, piece as you would like. One thing so uh, on this screen, you'll see lots of images of the solar system. And the reason I wanted to show you these images is to remind you of a couple of things. Uh, number one, um, making sure that we look at the standards and um, we understand exactly what the standard is asking. Um, I think it's very powerful for students to have lots of different types of visual representation of the order of the planets. So you'll notice here that we have a not to scale model. Um, of this, there's the sun, and then we have a linear view of the eight planets in a row. Um, of course, it doesn't really look like this in space, but it's helpful for us to see um, what those different planets are and the relative size of those when compared to each other. This is a great time to start to talk about models, which is part of your process skills. And um, for this unit, 
as well as limitations of the models. How is this like the real thing and why is it not like the real thing? Obviously we have to put this down to a smaller scale so that we can see it all at once. You'll see the same kind of representation here but slightly different. This one doesn't have the names of the planets um, but it's still got that kind of linear view here um, and you can also kind of look a little bit about scale but it's obviously not to actual scale. Um, here's a different view that actually shows the orbits, and so this is a great way to start to introduce the idea of what an orbit is. There aren't these really little lines out in space, but it helps show the path of how those different planets um, revolve around the sun. You'll see that this one is a side view, this one is a side view, and this one is more of a bird's eye view. So the more um, different perspectives we can give students, the better. Um, so we want to make sure that we really mix that up. Here's an image of a 3D model that just compares the um, different planet sizes. So that's just kind of a different view. And then, whoops, so sorry. And then um, down here we have a classroom kind of um, inflatable version of that. Um, so here's more of a 3D representation. And then the final one I wanted to show you was here, another one with orbits, but this is truly a bird's eye view um, that we're looking at the planets from the top because we can see what the orbit um, path looks like on here. So big takeaways from this, mix up the different views and types of um, planet order um, visuals that we see. And mix up how they draw those, write them, and so forth, and make sure that we've got the orbits represented in there as well. So I want to talk a minute for about Pluto and how much we love Pluto. Um, we have a little image here that has the moon um, that is talking to Pluto and say, it's okay, Pluto, I'm not a planet either. Uh, I just want to talk about um, the importance of making sure that our students understand the current um, classification of the eight planets, um, which does not include Pluto. <laughs> so we love to talk about Pluto. Many of us grew up when um, Pluto was part of our nine planets, but I just really need to emphasize the fact that we need to be accurate and up-to-date and current when we um, teach the planets. So I've got just a little bit of background on here. Um, if you want to talk about Pluto, I think it's a great teaching point to talk about why Pluto is now a dwarf planet um, and maybe why um, scientists would have changed that classification. And there's a link there if you'd like to learn more about it. But it, it's interesting. We probably know more about Pluto than our students do because that designation was changed all the way back in 2006. So again, if you are going to include Pluto in your discussion of the planets, be sure that you frame that discussion in that Pluto is now classified as a dwarf planet, not one of the official um, planets. We have eight planets now, not nine. And then it'd be great to talk about how science is ever-changing field and it's based on new discoveries and understanding. So sometimes it's organic and it changes and it grows. So just a little word about Pluto. Okay, so I mentioned models, um, which are really important for this particular unit. Um, models are in two of the process skills for this unit, and I have those listed off to the side. And here's just an example of a visual to help um, students understand what a model is, and then talking about um, Earth, Sun, and Moon system models, which is very specifically listed in um, the standard for third grade. So I just wanted to remind you about using models. If you need more information about that, there's actually a little mini lesson in STEM Scopes Teacher Toolbox for third grade specific to these two process skills. Okay, just wanted to show you a couple of tools um, that we have in the science lab that can help you with this unit. One is called the SunSpotter and it's a really, really cool tool. It's very easy to set up maybe when you go out for recess um, or if you're doing some work outside uh, maybe with your weather unit. Um, the instructions on how to set it up are printed right here on this piece of wood on the other side. You can't see it in this view but what it is is it um, projects an image of the sun onto a white piece of paper and you can actually see on a very clear bright day you can see sunspots, you can see the corona 
uh, shimmering uh, and you can also if you watch for just a few minutes you'll notice that the image of the sun starts to move across the paper which is a really powerful moment when your students discover that um, why is it moving what's happening and then you can start to talk about how the earth is rotating um, on its axis and bring that into the day and night and so forth the other thing that we have in the science lab um, is look, again listed specifically in the tools for third grade and that's a sun earth and moon model um, and you can find several of those in the science lab okay just want to wrap up with just a couple of reminders about the literacy connections for this unit we've got some delta science readers um, that fit very nicely with this content and i just want to remind you that uh, with those readers there's also some skill builders that have some um, reading and writing connections that are really great. Um, not everything in the skill builders is probably our focus for our reading and writing program, but I did talk to Teresa Lawson and she said to be sure to look for the pieces in those skill builders that have graphic organizers with open ended responses and she said those would be great um, additions to your reading and writing program. Okay, and then here's just a couple of technology ideas if you'd like to kind of reach out a little bit with your technology. Um, there's a really great um, couple of um, apps and websites for getting weather data from around the world or around the country or around Texas. Um, and then we've got a couple of other examples here. I've got some links in there for you to take a look at it too if you'd like. Um, of course, these links, since it's a video, are not live, but you can go back to the slides in this more and you can find those. Okay, and then just a last reminder about the vocabulary list. We want to make sure that we are using um, the vocabulary list that's written on the clarifier. Um, I know several teachers like to use the STEM scopes picture vocabulary, um, and that's great. It does not have all of the vocabulary that students are going to need to master the standard. So always check the clarifier for that vocabulary list that's really going to help your students be prepared and master um, what they need to for that particular content or process skill okay and then just finally i want to remind you that you do have an academic coach for science and that's me Brenda Swarzynski. Um, i'm happy to help you i'm available by email phone call or if you'd like me to come out and visit with you or your team i'm more than happy to help so just let me know what i can do to support your science program thanks so much for joining me thanks so much for all your hard work and let me know if there's any way i can help you